Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channel Television. So you heard from um, Civil Defenders Basketball Club coach Gomwa Paul says they have a surprise. And he won't tell us. They have a surprise for that Moroccan team called A.S. Sally. A.S. Sally, they are good. We respect them. They are defending champions of the FIBA Africa Basketball League. But Coach Paul says they came here and they tied us 69-69. That were going to shock them. And customers, I was seeing highlights of um, the first leg. They had that game in their hands and they lost it. So uh, uh, when the coach was talking, you were like, oh, hey, the apple, I'm sure you say amen in, in your heart. But uh, it's going to be difficult. You think they can pull it through? I mean, it's really difficult. I mean, these guys came in. They're the African champions. Yeah. Don't forget, yes, Sally. Yeah. They came here and they tied. And there's no overtime, according to the rules, I mean, the first leg. And they tied the team, civil defense. Awesome game. I mean, um, uh, at first, uh, they, they were able to play, they were able to rally themselves, uh, they were able to you know, get those important uh, balls in the basket. But um, you know, at some point, as the coach said, they tired out. Mm. And of course, yes, Sally too, came with a game plan and they got it well. Now, the problems with Nigerian teams are the fact that they cannot give that free throw. That is a problem of Nigerian teams. Now, if you see the last four seconds of the game, yeah. they had a free throw to win the game. You should take such chances. And that's the thing. And, yeah. and they had it, and the guy missed the two of them. Yeah. And um, you, could, you could see that the coach in the video was very, very livid, yeah. was jumping, yeah. wasn't happy about it. So now what they need to do the is to go back. And he said defensively, they are good. Yes, I could see some blocks, but then they need to be able to, uh, on the offensive, mm. you know, get those baskets, uh, get those balls in the basket. Uh, throw the threes, throw yeah, the because twos. Because the best way to defend the free, shot the free throws yeah. are very, the free throws are very very important as well. Yeah, you know, get, get get it as well. Uh, um, give give the right passes, give the right assist, and uh, they should be able to. Basketball is not um, a kind of game. Basketball game does not know home and away. But it well. does. <laughs> when I mean home and away, <laughs> the sense that yeah. it's how where you play. And now tactically good, your team. Well, 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 team rooting for. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it happens like that. Now, <laughs> now that's what I want to get you, Kule. Mm. The coach is confident. Yes, that's the attitude he should give before the match. But look at the hall at the package B of the National Stadium. The mm. fans didn't come out mm. on Friday. It will be a packed arena in Morocco. Yeah, it's going to be packed, yeah. and then you know you can always expect the home team to actually. Uh, use this as an, as an advantage uh, on their part. But I think, uh, just like you said, if the team uh, can exhibit the kind of confidence the coach has spoken about, I said the, he believes that the team has what it takes to actually go out there and pull the chestnut out of the fire. I think that's the confidence they mm -hmm. need uh, to actually go all out. Mm. I was so disappointed because I felt that, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. let's forget about the fact Even that one point, let's just yes, them. they had the chance to yeah. bury that game. They yeah. had the chance with those free throws for this squander them. I think this will not be... Uh, tolerated. This will not be accepted uh, in the reverse fixture on Friday. They <laughs> have to just capitalize <laughs> on all the chances they have. Those free throws is very important mm. uh, that they get them into the into uh, the net. But, I think um, yeah. impossible is nothing, as you said mm. at the start of the show yeah. when you talk about sports. But I, but then I was also careful because I know it's going to be very very difficult. Uh, do you know that the coach of AS Sally was actually? He was angry that why would the tie be allowed? Because he was certain that if he gets into overtime, that his team was going to win. Just, just imagine his pride. That's why we have to go to Morocco and shock him. It's a bit difficult, but hey, we support the civil defenders and we want them uh, to go because it's good for basketball, particularly club basketball in Nigeria. So let's see uh, what they can do. The second leg will be played on Friday in Casablanca, uh, Morocco. All the best to. Let me just say, let the best team win. But all the best to civil defenders, but let the best team win. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be monitoring that one, and we'll tell you right here on the show. We'll still stay in Abuja. Let's stay in Abuja. That's where uh, the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation had their annual general meeting. And at that meeting, the NTTF, they're advocating the need for state chapters to hold tournaments and competitions at the state level. Very, very important in order to create awareness about the commercial and professional benefits of table tennis, as well as providing a platform for young and talented players who could be recruited by the Federation to represent the country at international competitions. I totally agree. Mm. The guys at the local level, the states, they have a lot to do 
for table tennis. Our other quadri was discovered in Ibadan. Yeah. Um, Esther or Ibamiche, she's in Ekiti. Mm. That's how you can go around. around. Oh, what's the name again? This young girl that was discovered. She's in Quara. So that's why it's very important that these guys at the state level, they have plans so that in the end, when they discover talent, the federation at the national level now picks them up. I mean, you're quite spot on from everything that you say because uh, uh, the, the federation can only um, work with what you get from the grassroots. Um, you, you, you talked about uh, um, um, Irina Kodri, Ibadan, um, lots of them. Uh, of course, um, Funke Oshanayake was discovered back in the 80s mm -hmm. in Lagos. Yeah. Uh, in Lagos, lots of them like that. A lot, all of so them if you are not doing table tennis in your state, you are not how are they going to grow? Your state? And, and, mm. and, and, and that is just it. Now, the grassroots, and, and, and this is where the state association needs to come into. Yeah. Now, I do know for a fact that the Lagos State um, Table Tennis Federation actually trying their best to make sure that they uh, have um, competitions and uh, 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 they've been supported largely by the Lagos State Sports Commission, really. But the federations in other states, what exactly are they doing? What mm. competitions do they do? What inter-school competitions do they do? How do they discover um, players that are very, very good in table tennis? These are million-dollar questions and that, that, that should be taken very, very seriously. It is very, very sad that... It has to be the federation, the federation that is governing the sport in the country, that have to come down by themselves to the grassroots because they want to pick players. Yeah. Now, some of these, and, 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 and Lagos is showing the way because many of them, many of these players that are discovered in Lagos are actually representing Nigeria in competition. I mean, Nigeria and Egypt just qualified recently, I think today or yesterday, um, in the, for, for, for the World Junior Championship in Thailand, Nigeria and Egypt. Now, largely, the players that played for Nigeria in table tennis were from Lagos. You get what I'm trying to say? So, now, imagine if other states mm. eh, have this kind of play. Yeah. Uh, other states yeah. are doing this kind mm -hmm. of a thing. It would actually, you have a large pool of players. Uh, and the MBBF, I'm sorry, the, 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 the entity, the entity yeah. of, yeah. we have a very good headache. I like this kind of headache. Yeah. To pick players from. For instance, they already know some states that are doing so well. The name I was trying to remember is Sikurat Sikura, Ayala yeah. Bego. Yeah. She's so young and mm -hmm. she does well. Uh, Abayomi and Imashaun yeah. is another good talent. You know, and these guys are in Quara. We know Quara has been doing so well with table tennis. Cross River State has been doing so well. That's where we have Edem of Young. That's where he gave us Augustine Emmanuel. Uh, they also gave us Cecilia Oto Akman. So keep Cross River. Keep Quara. Keep, keep Lagos. Lagos. Keep Oyo and charge others that come out with competition. That's what the president of the NTTF, Mr. Ishaku Tikon, was saying at the annual general meeting. He stressed the need for state chapters to take table tennis to the grassroots level in order to encourage mass participation, which would serve as a catalyst for sports development in the country. Sports on. This same grassroots thing we're talking about. You, sh you shouldn't tell federations, organize grassroots program. Mm -hmm. What are the state chapters doing? Including? Yeah, I think the state, um, the, 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 the president is actually spot on yeah. uh, in all of this because um, you talk about the state who has be actually been active uh, in organizing grassroots competitions, uh, you know, in their states. Other states should also emulate that. Other states should also follow suit. I, I, I was saying something a couple of months ago. I said, back in the days, we used to have table tennis. Okay. I mean, the boards, uh, the table tennis uh, bo uh, the board across in different places in all Even over. Even if it's not the standard uh, board, the hood, we, yes. we had our boards. Yeah. We no. make the boards ourselves, we carve the bat. I exactly. don't know why, why, why we're not, we don't get to see that, but the good thing is that we are still up there when it comes to uh, table tennis in Africa, yeah. and of course we're still doing well yeah. in the world. So I think it's very imperative that other states who are not active should also follow the footsteps of states like um, uh, Lagos State, um, Cross River, and others, you know, mm -hmm. other states who are also doing well. There's need for us to have a developmental program. Yeah. You remember, we we're talking about it before we bring it into the studio. Mm -hmm. How that you know development, uh, you know grassroots is the, the is, is that you know you start That's from the, the grassroots, foundation. the foundation, yeah. and of course to the apex. So it's I very agree. important I that agree. all these states mm -hmm. who are not active begin to you know do what they're expected to do. So it's very simple. That's I've been re recommending this, and I'll keep saying it. 
national sports, um, the Ministry for Youth and Sports, and every other person involved in sports administration, if the state chapters are not viable, if they are not useful, can we just scrap them? So that we will know that there's no need because you go to <laughs> some of these state chapters offices, you just see a table and one person. <laughs> and for an entire year, nothing, not one program. That's really not good. So that's a good step table tennis is taking. And I just hope that they walk the talk because all the time we hear this and, and nothing is done afterwards. So it's a good one at the annual general meeting. That's what they stress. State chapters should get busy organized grassroots competition that will be useful for the country. I totally agree. We'll still stay uh, at the age grade level. The grassroots is very important. And let me tell you about the IHF uh, Challenge Trophy that's in handball. They're going to Kosovo. Uh, under 18 and under 21, Cosmos is involved with handball uh, in the country. So Cosmos, uh, how important are these tournaments for, for the country? Well, it's like the under 20, sorry, it's like the under-18 and under-19 World Cup mm. football for handball. Wow. Um, it is um, organized by the International Handball Federation, and um, Nigeria actually qualified for this last year. Now, Nigeria qualified for this competition for the first time since um, 1988. So, uh, it, and, and, you know, uh, 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 handball was um, somewhat in comatose, but, um, you know, they have been trying as much as for you to get Ambo into it. And, and this is how we can start talking and, about and, and, it. And, and this is how grade. we can start talking about it from yeah. the age grade. And many of these players were picked from the national under uh, uh, um, 18 and under 21 handball championship that um, uh, 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 concluded about three weeks ago. Now, many of them Beautiful. have been there. Now, if you look at this on the 18 side, this on the 18 side, the core of the team have been together for one and a half years. Good. The core of the team have been together. And because the core of the team have been together, um, Coach um, um, Emeka uh, Namani and, of course, Coach um, Musa have been together with the team. And you need to see them when they played against um, Team Lagos in the test game mm -hmm. last week. They were awesome. They were nice. very, very good. Nice. Now, the other 21 side as well have been playing as well. And they have been together. They have, I mean, they were camping in Lagos uh, for about over a month. And they have been together for quite a long while as well. So we hope that um, they go to um, Kosovo and uh, make Africa, not Nigeria, mm. Africa proud because we'll be representing Africa. And they are the only African side. There. That's nice. So you, you, you're saying the team list. We showed you that of under 18. Mm. This is the team list for under 21. And Cosmos just said something that was really, really laudable. That is the competition that was done in Lagos that some of these players were picked. So we keep saying, don't just organize competitions or one-offs. Let there be something that will come out of it. So we've mm. got some players now by organizing that competition. So let's just wish them all the best as they go to also, the also, before we finish, the, the under-21 side, we commence the competition tomorrow on the 10th against um, Chinese Tapai. Mm. Then um, two days later, now if they win their two games, they will qualify for the next round. Good. Now two days later, that's on the 12th, that's on Friday, they're going to be playing against Paraguay. So uh, we hope that and they do very well. Then after it, the under-18 competition will mm. commence mm. as well and the draws will come out then. So what I love this is... Um, for you to, to, to be known for something, you must start somewhere. Mm. And the Federation, they are staying focused. They said, we are not coming to shout nas senior national team, senior national team, that mm. they're going to go back to where they lost it with the development of handball in the country, and that's the age grade. So now we're getting to talk about this age grade competition. We went to one in Algeria, also that yeah, we that, won. That, that was in Niger. Yeah. Uh, with Niger, the under-18 18. side yeah. female, yeah. they qualified for the World Championship. Beautiful. The under-21, unfortunately, could not qualify for the World Championship. So it's going to be... A, in fact, there's going to be a lot of international competitions. Yes, I'm yeah. talking intercontinental competitions for handball this year alone. Every month, there's a competition that Nigeria will be participating mm. in, um, hopefully, if there is fund. And then that, that, that's something that Handball is trying to do. And in between it, they're going to be playing the All-African Games. In between it, they're going to be playing the league as well. Then they have other competitions as well. So basically, the Handball Federation of Nigeria is loaded with activities this year. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's Handball development for you in the country. Let's go to the UEFA Champions League. What's going on? Ah, are the score lines changing? Tottenham 
Ah, what can Tottenham yep. do without Son mm -hmm. this season? Yep. He has given Spurs <laughs> the lead. And we said it, uh, Sergio Aguero will be kicking himself now. He should have converted that penalty. Yeah, he should have converted that penalty, but that didn't happen because um, I think um, Tottenham Hotspur showed intent uh, from the start of this game that they actually needed this game. I remember that it was Pochettino, um, Mauricio Pochettino, that ended uh, their coach at uh, his first defeat, talking about Guardiola, mm. uh, you know, in, in 2016. And then, um, you know, they, we, 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 we knew that if they are able to play the pressing game uh, that they are known for, mm. they will really stand a very good chance in this game. Uh, I, I know it was going to, it's going to be very difficult, yeah, yeah. but with the way they've actually played, <laughs> I tell you, uh, Austin, they've been playing with a lot of belief, with a lot yeah. of confidence uh, from the start of this game, and I'm not surprised that they've actually uh, scored a goal in this game. Awesome. And, the, and, and, the, and the fact that um, Hugo Lloris saved a very, yeah. a very good as penalty early, early, early on, minutes, as yeah. early as the 13th minute, mm. um, uh, against Sergio Aguero that usually scores penalty yeah. um, is really, really huge. And in that, their new White Hart Lane Stadium. stadium. Um, Funny thing was that Hugh Min Son was the one that scored the first goal in the new White Hart Lane Stadium. <laughs> and yeah. scoring again, so he has uh, scored two goals so far yeah. at Absolutely. White Hart Lane, the new White uh, Hart Lane we'll Stadium. To White Hart Son. Some uh, <laughs> human <Okay>. son stadium. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, the match is in its 80th minute. Wow, I was yes. expecting to see goals uh, in the match between Liverpool and FC Porto. Is still 2-0. Yeah, 2-0. No, I think uh, that that's not a surprise at all because um, you know it was actually expected that Liverpool were going to take uh, FC Porto to the cleaners. Do uh, you remember the last time they met uh, in the second in the round of 16 of the UEFA Champions League? They got a 5 0. Ah, but but, 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 but this is in Porto. Porto has yeah. been fantastic. But I mean, if you see how they qualify, well, you know, played, they qualify right? especially their top striker. Uh, yeah. Despite all of that, when they meet, uh, they've the never been able to turn time. out a win yeah. against Liverpool in yeah. the UEFA Champions League. No. Uh, they've met six different times, yeah. and the Liverpool dominated the 1 3 and the 2 3. So I think, uh, but the way Liverpool have only lost a game. This is in, in the English Premier League. They've got their three games and they've lost one game. This really goes to show how well they've actually been doing uh, this season. Yeah. So I'm not surprised uh, you know, that they, they are two, that their two goes up. But let's also remember that it we played over two legs. Yes. So exactly. Just, <laughs> just the first leg. Let's get on with the show now. Let me tell you about the 2019 Echo Beach Soccer Tournament. It will take place on Monday, April the 22nd at the landmark Premier Lifestyle Beach in Victoria. Island Lagos. So officials of uh, Lagos State Football Association, the, the professor called this one the Eco Beach Soccer Tournament. Beach soccer is doing well at the national team's level, but we don't have a league yet for it. So Eco Football, they say to themselves, now we, we, we can do more. We have lovely beaches in Lagos. We can, so every, every year for Easter celebration, they come out and they play. So uh, we see teams, for instance, stationary stores, FCBS, Cola, and some other teams in Lagos, they come and they compete in the Eco Beach Soccer Tournament. And according to uh, the Lagos State Football Association, eight teams will compete in the tour at the tournament and the teams will be placed into two groups. The clubs, Remo Stars, Smart City, Colin Edwin, FCBS, Cola, and Nat Boys. Wow, Nat Boys. In Didi, played for Nat Boys. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, others are stationary stores, Messiah and Eco Football. Um, guys, what I see out of this competition each time it comes is that um, it's a reminder that we can actually have a proper beach soccer league. Yes, certainly. In we, the we, of course, we can. Yeah. Um, very, very proper. Uh, but um, the, the, the question is. Uh, uh, beach soccer in Nigeria has it uh, gotten lots of ground because it seems it's just in Lagos or the Riverine area and and, and that's the issue. So we, 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 the idea of a we league need, makes sense. Yeah, it will. They, they need to. They need to it will make sense. It will make sense. But we need to plan it. That's what I said. Yes, to make yeah. sense. With, but with, with, with proper planning, let's do that. Let's do that. We'll yeah. come back. Let's go on this quick break. When we'll come back, we'll listen to officials of the Lagos State Football Association and I'll we'll get on with the show. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.